Let's say you've set a goal for a new house. You've begun to chant about it. Do you find your thinking going like this? I want a new house. I doubt I can get it. I want a new house but I don't think I can afford it. I want a new house in this lovely neighborhood. My significant other says that isn't realistic in view of my history. And so it goes. When you set the goal, you have started the process of attracting it to you. Your goal is the thought that is going to draw and shape that universal life energy and bring it into your world. If you have thoughts that doubt you can get it, or say you can't afford it, it's as though you've held up your palm and told the universe to slow down. President Ikeda says, when your determination changes, everything will begin to move in the direction you desire. The moment you resolve to be victorious, every nerve and fiber in your being will immediately orient itself towards your success. On the other hand if you think, this is never going to work out, then in that instant every cell in your being will be deflated and give up the fight. Then everything really will move in the direction of failure. Keep giving attention to what you want. Maybe your goal feels like too big a stretch and you don't believe you can get there. Don't give up. Take the first step towards your goal. Look at houses on the internet. As you look at the beautiful homes, let yourself dwell on what you want. Flesh it out in detail. Give attention to what you want. That attention continues to strengthen the desire. Brush away any thoughts to the contrary and turn your attention back to what you want. Develop the details. As you dream about your perfect house, add in the special details that would make it your home. Allow yourself to become excited about it. Know there will be the perfect house for you when the time is right. Don't keep looking at the defects in your old house. You've been living with what you don't want. That's why you decided to set the new goal. Don't continue to look at the defects in the old house over and over to explain why you want a new one. When you keep giving attention to them, you are creating more of the same. Focus your mind on what you want and brush away what you don't want. This is not always easy and often requires practice. What is being realistic? My significant other says I'm not being realistic in view of my history. Being realistic to him, her means looking at conditions as they have been in the past. If you continue to look at what has been, that is what you will continue to create. What you give your attention to, grows. Don't you want to create a new reality, something new? To do that, you must keep your attention on what you want to have happen, the something new. The material world is more changeable than you think. You often think that the way life looks on the surface it is the reality. When you do this you are forgetting that all of life at the quantum level is vibration and shaped by thought. It only looks immovable, but that's not the reality. When you persist with your thought and stay focused on what you want the immovable conditions of life will give way to the new creation. You set the goal. Let the Gohansen handle how to get there. It's your job to set the goal. It is the job of the Gohansen to take care of how you are going to get there. When you decide how it is going to happen, you set roadblocks in the way of the universe doing its job. When you open your mind to all the possibilities, you may well be completely surprised by what develops, sometimes things you would never have imagined. An experience. My husband and I bought a fixer-upper and turned it into our dream home. Next to us was a house owned by an out-of-state landlord who was letting the house deteriorate. The renters went from a nice family to multiple renters, one couple with substance abuse problems and a nurse in training. We chanted that the house would be bought by someone who would fix it up and make a nice home of it. For several months, nothing happened. We could have looked at what was and decided that we couldn't influence it. Instead, we persisted chanting with our vision in mind. I remember saying to my husband that only an explosion would change the situation there. We just couldn't see how our goal could happen. One day, there was an explosion. The nurse collected the rent and left town to consult with his aunt, a real estate attorney. The landlord arrived two days later in a high temper. It turned out the nurse had put the rent in escrow until the landlord fixed electrical problems, which were in danger of causing a fire. The landlord harassed everyone. When the nurse returned he slapped the landlord with a restraining order which forbade him to come around the house or talk to anyone involved. We had the landlord sitting on the wall in front of our house glaring at the nurse playing his guitar on the front step of his house at 1am then we heard rumors of court action. 
In the space of three days, everyone left the house. Nothing happened for six months, while we continued to chant, our vision in mind. Then one day, Scott drove in. He was a contractor, and had bought the house with the intention of fixing it up and selling it. He turned that house into a beautiful family home and then sold it to a man who has been an outstanding landlord, who rented it to a nice family. Anything is possible. Number 1. Remember your thoughts are the builder. They form that life force, energy into what you envision. Number 2. Look at what you want, not what you don't want. Number 3. Practice getting rid of negative thoughts by returning your attention to what you want. Number 4. Don't worry about being realistic. That is only what has been and you don't want to continue to create the same old thing. Number 5. What appears unchangeable is an illusion. Everything can be changed when we turn our thought energy to it and chant about it. Number 6. Be open that it can happen in ways you can't imagine. Don't tie down the creativity of the universe by structuring how it is going to happen. Number 7. Set a goal and try the experiment. Thank you.